Why do Christians suffer? Um, suffering is an expected part of the Christian life. And Jesus told his followers, as um, is written in the book of uh, John 16.33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now, that truth, that truth about overcoming sustains Christians when suffering threatens to overwhelm them. Christians suffer for a variety of reasons, uh, including many of the same reasons that uh, non-Christians suffer, uh, because life on this broken planet can be difficult. And uh, Christians may also suffer for some of the same reasons as did, uh, Jesus did. Okay? We have to understand this. Jesus also suffered. Okay? And uh, the Bible says there are some reasons why Jesus suffered. Let, let me show you John 5, 18. John 15, 18. John uh, 15 verse 18 we can read to 19 and you see some of the reasons why jesus suffered he said if the world hate you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you're of the world the world will love his own but because you're not of the world but i've chosen you out of the world therefore the world will hate you so jesus was hated because he's, he was not of this world and he says if you're his disciple you'll also be hated by the people they will hate you. They will not want anything to do with you because you're saying weird things, alien things, which are not like the way they're used to, okay? So believers represent an uncompromising truth that the world doesn't want to hear. The Christians always tell people that Jesus is the way and people don't want to hear that. They want to hear that there are many ways to heaven. There are many ways to whatever. And this is one of the most hotly debated topic that Jesus is not the only way. How can he be the only way? Okay? You will hear people comment and they argue and they say all types of things and they say, no, we have this other way. You can go through uh, uh, um, the Buddhist God. You can go through Allah. You can go through these. You can go. But Jesus is the only way. See, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. So they will not want to hear that. They don't want to hear that Jesus is the way. So you'll be hated because of that. Okay, now suffering of any kind was not part of God's creation. <clears throat> okay, God uh, created um, uh, the world in a perfect way. He did not create suffering in any way. Okay, everything he created was very, very good. As the Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 31. Genesis 1, verse 31. So there was nothing to do with suffering. He created and he said, okay, let it be like this. And he knew it will be in a way that uh, people would enjoy. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God in the Garden of Eden, he created everything perfect. But sin corrupted the world at Adam's disobedience. And sin continues to corrupt the world uh, every day, even now. And also, we also add uh, our, our poor decisions, rebellions, selfishness, and, and all those kind of things. And, and it's like a ripple, ripple effect. It's like a ripple effect. Sin has ripple effects. You sin here, you sin there, another one sinning there. And there is a ripple effect all through. Our sin harms others. And uh, their sin harm us, even when you have done nothing wrong. Because becoming a Christian does not really insulate us from the ugliness of this world. Nor does it protect us from the natural or temporal consequences of sin. Okay? Sin is there. Just go and read uh, Romans 3.23 and uh, Romans 6.23 and Romans 8.19-23. You'll be able to... 
understand that sin is purely there ever in the world. And uh, the book of 1 Peter addresses Christians who are suffering. It addresses these Christians who really, really suffered. And Peter encourages them in their trials, reminding them that their suffering had a purpose. Okay? Their suffering had a purpose. Let me show you what Peter was saying in 1 Peter 1, uh, 6. 1 Peter 1, verse 6. He was encouraging them and telling them, your suffering has a cause. Don't, don't, don't you worry. Relax. Hold on. Okay? Hold on. Relax. It's okay. I know it's happening. And uh, I don't know. My internet is going uh, low. But uh, let me just paraphrase because I see. Oh, okay. So on. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a reason, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So, what, what is Peter trying to, to tell them? That don't worry about your suffering. Your trials, they, 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 they are for a good purpose. Don't worry about what is happening. Okay? And uh, in other words, God uses temporary suffering to refine the character of his own children, okay? He uses temporary, uh, temporary suffering to refine the character of his children. And uh, you see, James tells us to consider it pure joy. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of uh, many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish his work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James 1, verse 2 to 4. You see, suffering, no matter its cause, can be used by God to complete us in him. He can... He can complete us in him. And uh, there are several possible reasons uh, for Christians suffering that are distinct from the reasons of the general suffering experienced by everyone. Number one, just like I'm showing you here, you have to ask yourself, God, does God punish his children? God is a father. Is he not supposed to punish his children? Now, one of the reasons why as Christians we suffer is because um, suffering may be a form of discipline. God is a good father, and when one of his children goes astray, he may use suffering to bring him or her back. Remember what the Bible says in Hebrews 12.5? Hebrews 12.5 God is, is a good father, and he knows that, and he wants to correct his children. See what the Bible says. And and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despite thou not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth is, chast is chastened, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. For if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as a sons. For what son is he whom the father chasten not? But if you be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then you are bastards and you are not sons. If you, you just want to stay and, and uh, you don't want to be disciplined by God, then you, you're a bastard, you're not a son. You're just any other person out there. So God disciplines those that he loves. And uh, in verse 7, it, 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 it insists so more and tells us to endure hardship as discipline. Because God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? What kind of children can it be who are not disciplined by their father? For example, uh, when a man who spends... Uh, when, when, when a man who spends... Um, all his time and passion at work 
instead of uh, spending the time with his family or with God, loses his job. It, it may be that uh, God is toppling his idols in order to help him readjust his priorities. Financial stress may feel like suffering, but it could be intended to produce godly character in a person who has placed too much importance on money. Even if hardship has no link to a specific, um, uh, it, it has no link to, even if hardship has no specific link to sin or struggle, God can still use it to train us. We have to understand that parents, for example, often assign their children, okay? As parents, you, you assign your child, they assign their children uh, to different kind of uh, the, uh, uh, chores in, in, at home. This is not to punish them, but to help them learn various skills and build a solid, solid work ethic. This kind of chores that they, 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 they may feel as if they are suffering, the child might feel as if, oh, my, my dad is really bad. He told me to wash the utensils, to wash clothes and do this. They may feel as if it's a suffering, but they are being used so that they can be built into something greater, that something in the child can be built up, which will serve him or her well throughout the rest of their life. That's exactly how God is like. Another reason why people suffer, another reason why people suffer is that, uh, you see, suffering enables Christians to identify and encourage each, each other. They are People suffering in the north and others suffering in the south and others suffering in Europe and, and, uh, and in Africa and, uh, and in, in Asia and places like that. And when you meet up and you're both in different kind of ways, you can encourage each other. You can tell another believer, don't worry, God is going to do something for us. It's okay. As the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1, uh, 3, 4, let me just paraphrase because I don't want to take much time. You can go and read. It says, Praise be to the Lord, to, uh, to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So you have to understand, those who have experienced the grace of God in their trouble are better equipped to help others find the same grace in their trouble. Okay? Let me give you a good example. Um, Johnny Arikison, Arikison Tada, that's, that, that's a name. I just checked out this name is a bit... Difficult. Johnny Tada, let me just say that. Huh? Johnny Tada is a good example of uh, what suffering is all about, okay, uh, in, a, in a good way. Uh, she was a diving accident when uh, she was 17 years old. And uh, this left her a wheelchair-bound uh, person. And uh, she deals daily with pain and lack of mobility, but... Uh, she has allowed God to grow her and develop uh, his character in her. For several decades, her and her husband, okay, her and her husband, um, they have overseen ministries that serve the disabled. From summer comes from the mentally challenged to wills for the world and projects that provide uh, you know wheelchairs to improvised handicapped people johnny has used her own suffering for the benefit of thousands for the benefits of thousands by allowing johnny to suffer for a while in this life, God is providing her a unique opportunity to store up bountiful treasures for eternity. Okay? She's gone through a lot, but God is allowing this that she can put on a lot of, you know, 
reaching people in the world and uh, helping others in different places. You see, God can use your suffering for his glory. God can use his suffering for your suffering for his glory. Because he said in, in Matthew 6.19, let me show you, Matthew 6.19, uh, the Bible tells us something here. Mm, let me show you this. It talks about still the aspect of how God uses suffering in different ways to reach people and to you know help them in different ways. I, I don't know why it's uh it's it's taking long. Let me just say uh, paraphrase the same uh from my Bible here. Uh let me just go back here to this lady. Let me paraphrase for you Matthew 6 19. It says, Lay up not for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break nor steal where are you laying your treasures johnny may have had a rough time here in this world but her treasures where she's storing them, helping the, uh, those in uh, similar problems like us, this problem has come for good. Okay, another thing also why we may face uh, troubles and uh, sufferings is because um, suffering helps us to grow, uh, draw closer to the Lord. We often seem to, uh, most of the time, we often seem to grow very close to God when we go through difficult times. Have you ever experienced this kind of thing? When you're facing some hard time, you feel, I'm just more close to God. I want to pray. I want to, because sometimes when we are really happy and uh, things are working out, we may not really uh, think about God so much. Suffering strips us mm, out of uh, the artificial or temporal securities and forces us to dig deeply into the word and find peace and purpose. It has been said that um, when Christ is all you have, <laughs> you will find that Christ is all you need. Okay? Now, another thing is that uh, suffering reminds us that this world is not our home. And uh, Christians who live in more affluent parts of the world may find it harder to long for heaven than their improvised brothers and sisters maybe in other parts of the world which are suffering. When life is comfortable, eternity is only a glimmer far in the future. But when Christians suffer persecutions, poverty and uh, uh, privation, eternity starts to become the brightest light in their lives. Often Christians who suffer have an advantage in keeping the priorities right. But if you're not suffering, you, you'll not think about anything. You'll be saying, mm, it's okay, yeah, I want this life because I, I'm having it also so good. You see, there are some people who teach her, uh, that uh, those who have enough faith will never have to suffer. But this doctrine is contradicted on every page of the New Testament. From John the Baptist, do you remember John the Baptist? Being beheaded in prison, Matthew 14, 1 to 12, remember that? To John the Apostle, you remember John the Apostle? Being banished to Patmos. Go and read Revelation 1.9. You see, the, the New Testament is a record of the terrible sufferings that dominated the first century church. They were persecuted so much. They were eaten by lions. They were uh, crucified. They were, oh, so much happened to them. Just go and read the Acts 8 from verse 1 to 3. The men and women listed in Hebrews 11 were commended for their faith. And many, uh, many on the list, including um, Abel, Noah, Abraham, I don't have time to go to all of them, endured suffering. Just go and read Hebrews 11 verse 16. Okay? 
I, I will just paraphrase it for you here. The Bible says, but now they desire a better country. That is an heavenly, heavenly country. Are you desiring an heavenly country? Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For God has prepared them a city. Now, are you looking forward to this city? Are you looking forward for this city? We, we, we read of uh, faithful Moses. Do you remember Moses? The faithful Moses who chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. He was looking ahead to his reward as is written in Hebrews uh, 11, 25 to 26. Moses' faith did not shield him from suffering. And in fact, it contributed to his choosing of it to gain something greater. Now, the author of Hebrews, the author of Hebrews also speaks of uh, so many unnamed faithfuls who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might be then they might gain an even better resurrection. Because Jesus was was he suffered the same way. And uh, the, the, the servants are not above the master. And if the master suffered and he went through all this, and he came up victorious, then what makes you not want to suffer? And But if you're, you love prosperity gospel, what's going to happen is that you'll be told that in Christ there's no suffering, there's no this and this. But when things come rough, you will deny Christ because you are planted on thorns. And when things come and chalk you, you will be confused and you will think, Oh no, it's not the, the way I thought. You, you see, Jesus told me that uh, this and this will be good. but No, it's, he did not tell you that. He told you in this world you will face trials and persecutions. And it's very well explained by the people who are tortured, refusing to be released, that they might gain and even gain even much more better resurrection with a lot of rewards because of their suffering some were faced uh, some some of them faced jeers and floggings and even chains and imprisonments they were put to death by stoning they were sawed into two they were killed by the sword they they went about in sheepskins and goat skins and destitute persecuted and mistreated the world was not worthy of them they wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes and in uh, in holes in the grounds. Remember Hebrews uh, uh, eleven thirty five. What it says: Women received their dead, raised to life again, and were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And and others a trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. And even bonds of imprisonment. Remember all that. These people are looking for a better life. Which is found in Christ Jesus. So if you're there and you're sitting down and you're saying, Oh, my suffering, my suffering, my suffering, I'm suffering. <laughs> you see, our ultimate hope is not in this world. In gaining earthly comforts. Our hope is in God and in his greater plan. And it requires faith to please God. As Hebrews 11, uh, 6 says, without faith is impossible to please God. And the faithful know that a lack of suffering is not a reliable indi indication of his pleasure. Neither is the experience of suffering proof of his displeasure. The same hope is, um, is shown by the people mentioned in Hebrews 11, if you can take time and go there later on. Hebrews 11, when we suffer for doing right, it's always good to suffer for doing right. In uh, 1 Peter 3.14, it explains to us about suffering when you're doing 
things right. Even when we suffer as a, as a direct result of our own poor choices, uh, our suffering is never wasted. God promises to use even our most heartbreaking pain for good if we will trust Him with it. Remember in Romans 8.28 uh, to 30, Paul, Paul, he suffered more than almost many of the apostles. He suffered more. Shipwrecking, you know, and uh, beaten by a snake in some island, uh, flogged and many other things. Paul really suffered. Remember even his, his shipwreck. I don't know how many times Paul was, uh, he got shipwrecked. And all that time he suffered and uh, he stayed the longest in prison and uh, faced a lot of troubles. But he still wrote in 2 Corinthians uh, 4, 17 to 18. What did Paul write? He said, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not his what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is seen is eternal. That knowledge strengthens Christians when they are called to suffer. Don't worry. Don't fear. Don't say, oh, I'm suffering as a Christian. No, you've been told in this world, you'll face trials and tribulations. You'll face a hard time. But be faithful because great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. And how can you know that great is your reward in heaven if you're first saved? And how will you be saved? By believing the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about how and why Jesus died. Why did Jesus die? He died for your sins. The Bible says he, Jesus was, uh, he, he, he died for our sins, he was buried and rose again, according to the scriptures. He died for your sins. And how did he die? By shedding of blood. And why is the blood important? Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He laid his life for us. So if, if you believe that what Jesus did was for you, all you need to do is just to confess that to him in a prayer and tell him that Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again, as the Bible indicates. And all that, you're saved. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've been able to understand and be able to come to the knowledge of the truth because unless you know the truth, then you're still lost. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a blessed time. You can uh, share the video. You can uh, give it a thumbs up. And also you can uh, subscribe so that um, you can watch more videos which we post each and every, every day. God bless you and have a blessed, 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 blessed time.